controls what we manufacture. Um, this is our hardware, it is our software, so you deal with one vendor and one complete system. Um, it's all designed for light commercial facilities. You know, there's, there's obviously a lot of different solutions out there available for large buildings, um, but there's this, this area of small light commercial buildings, typically under 25,000 square feet, where there's a huge opportunity. Most of them have, if they're lucky, programmable thermostats. A lot of them don't. But even those that have them, they're typically in a permanent hold. The, uh, the, you know, the clock setting is wrong, so the schedule it's running isn't ideal. Uh, they don't have any idea if the systems are running overnight because they really have no instant feedback on their set points. And so all they do is they get an energy bill, and of course it's for a month late, you know, a month earlier, and they go, crap, that seems high, but they pay it. You know, and that's, that's that. So what we do is we enable them to see, have visibility over their facility, their set points, if their you know, compressors are, are running overnight, you know, drawing energy, all of those things. Okay. So the opportunity is huge, is, is my note here with you, and that they're wasting a ton of energy in this space. So 90% of all facilities are smaller than 25,000 square feet. And the smaller facilities use 50% more energy per square foot. So again, they need a system like this. Most of them don't know one's available or don't think they can afford it, okay? But they can. So kind of give you guys an idea of some different like commercial customers and applications, and it varies, but obviously restaurants have been very good for us, retail, offices, schools, okay? Um, so you've got casual dining restaurants. They use so much energy that the payback for them with this system is typically, I mean, it's almost always under a year, and in a lot of cases, it's six to nine months with casual dining. Um, quick serve restaurants, big opportunity with them as well. Again, think of all of these, you know, you get in your car, you drive up and down any commercial street, and you've got these, you know, one and two story buildings absolutely everywhere. So the opportunity to save them money and give them remote control and visibility is huge. Small box retail, also uh, an opportunity because they use less energy, quite quite a bit less than you know casual dining and, and other restaurants. For them, they may not be interested in the energy monitoring piece, but we still have a very strong offering with just the uh, remote thermostat controls. You got mid-box retail, and then like I said, schools and offices have been very good for us as well. So. What is the InTouch Controls Energy Management System? It all starts with the HVAC control. So as you see here, we've got one of our commercial controllers, okay? It gets wired up just like any other programmable thermostat, so it's getting its power via 24 volt from the rooftop unit, okay? Built into the device itself is a Wi-Fi radio. So there's, there's nothing that you have to bolt into the, you know, air handler or anything like that. It's all on board, all built in. So in the case of a uh, you know, commercial business, they've got a Wi-Fi network. Uh, you would be attaching or connecting to their Wi-Fi network. So if they've got you know, security code and a password, you would need that to enter into the device when you're setting it up. Then you're on their network. So what it's doing then is it's transmitting all the data um, back to our server via the cloud, and then we make all of that available for the users to see. So all they're doing is going to a website. They don't have to download any software. They don't have to put anything onto their server. So IT departments in these companies, they love it because they don't have to worry about something uh, on the inside. Then we also have the energy monitoring units, and that's this, uh, this little grid monitor here. And this gets installed inside the electric panel, okay? Or panels, depending on what you want to monitor, how many points, etc. We always want to use one of these in the main distribution panel to pick up total building main. And then we want, and in a lot of cases in that same panel are the RTUs or the split systems. So you can usually pick those up too. So we've got three main inputs for your total building, or your, or your main power for that panel. And then eight on the load side. So eight different breakers can be monitored. We're just using split core CTs. This happens to be a 200 amp. We've got them as small as 50 amp and can go as large as 1,000 amp. Okay, so they just clamp around. They have leads uh, go back and plug into the device itself. I'll pass that around. Okay, and then everything, as I said, is is accessible via any tablet device, smartphone, computer, etc. 
So cloud-based facility controls, what is that, what does that mean? So it gives customers dashboards, gives them the ability to see all of their facilities and then you know, kind of at a glance check the health of the facility. Uh, how are they doing with uh, energy? How are they doing with their set points? Are they having any vacancy energy? Things like that, which I'll, I'll go into more detail in a minute. Gives them control so they can change you know, uh, HVAC settings remotely. Alerts, so alerts can be sent via text or email or both. Can be sent to multiple people. Or you can have just, you know, some alerts go to some guys and another go to someone else. So it's very flexible. <coughs> Scheduling can be done remotely. <coughs> Security, so you can enable security so that the device itself, all users can do with the device is change temperature. This is great for, again, restaurants and retail where, you know, there's a general manager that's in charge of that store, and that person has employees, they don't want them to be able to drive it down to 60 degrees and leave it, right? So they may set it up to where they're only giving them two or three degrees of temperature change and maybe make that last for as little as an hour. So after that hour, it's gonna go right back to schedule. So at the stat level, the only thing those users can do is change temperature, unless they have the passcode. Uh, okay. So, you know, typical modern building that, or modern day building uh, with automation, with security, you know, we see this all the time. These are usually the type of stuff that we're replacing, you know? You'll notice the picture on the top left, you know, clearly at one point it had one of those lock boxes on it that everybody knows how to pick it. Or in this case, it's not even there anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it makes me laugh sometimes when we go into these facilities and you see their, their policy is usually they write, do not touch on the stat. And then, you know, where it'll say, always leave at 78 degrees, you walk up to it and it's 65, you know? Yeah. So you see that kind of stuff all the time. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of funny, but it's also sort of sad. So the InTouch One controller, I talked briefly about it a second ago. It's a color touchscreen true commercial controller. Um, it has occupancy-based scheduling, uh, setback control, security features, and I'll show you on the web portal what that looks like and how you set those up. Uh, it does have internal temperature and humidity uh, sensors, and then you can also do, um, you can add in a, a wired remote sensor. So a lot of these facilities want these stats in the manager's office, or that's where they are already. So you can either use, in most cases, you can use the existing sensor, or you can you know, run a new one. That's just your basic 10K type two, type three, or 20K type four. Um, also, that device is also available via ethernet or LAN connection. So if somebody doesn't have Wi-Fi, or for whatever reason they don't want to use Wi-Fi, um, then you can run Cat5 cable to just one of the controllers. And so you don't have to run it, if they have four, you don't have to run it to all four. Just run it to one, and then the other three will communicate on our own internal network, which is the same way that that energy monitor communicates back to the controller. It's on our own internal in touch network. Okay. So, talked a little bit about the energy monitoring units. So one monitor fits all. It doesn't matter whether it's a single phase or three phase panel, whether it's 230 or 480 volt. Um, what differs is what size and quantity of CTs that, that you need. Okay. And we can help you with that and, and Jackson can help you with that as well. So just kind of an idea, a visual of what it looks like inside the panel. So you mark what breakers you want to monitor, okay, before you take the uh, panel cover off. Um, and then, so from there, you find a place to power up the device, and, and what you're doing is you're powering it up off of one of the breakers, um, if, preferably if there's an open or, an, you know, an available uh, three-pole breaker, powering it up off of that, or you're double tapping off of one. Once that device is powered up, it's transmitting, again, on our own wireless internal network, transmitting the data to the nearest controller, okay, which then is acting as the gateway for that. Then you're clamping your CTs around the main feeds coming in, A, B, and C, running it back to your main one, two, three, and then whatever breakers you're wanting to monitor, you're clamping around. Typically with the smaller 50 amp CTs, but depending on the size of, of the, you know, the breaker load, you may be using a larger one. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to switch over to the web portal and kind of start showing you guys what that looks like. Um, any questions about the hardware parts that I just went over? 